I'm, I'm looking for him. Check. Of course, the pictures you are seeing right there as we await a little activity showing us that any moment now we should be expecting to hear from Prime Minister Raila Odinga. Again, as we've said, a man who must be congratulated for many things, including the fact that when the IABC did announce um, his rival, Uhuru Kenyatta, as president-elect, he remained adamant on his supporters to keep the peace, he himself being um, uh, one of the major campaigners for peace throughout this period and for choosing to use the legal channels to address his complaint. So he's certainly a man who the country still has tremendous respect for, uh, for the manner in which he carried himself. A room packed with journalists, uh, certainly from this country and around the world as they await to hear what he will have to say about that unanimous decision from the Supreme Court. And as soon as that activity does start, then we will be bringing you um, that event live. Um, his team, of course, lining up there. It will be interesting to find out what his next move will be. Of course, you do know, of course, that uh, having run for the presidency, he is not member of parliament. He lost that seat to the constitution, of course, made those distinctions. But will he remain active in leadership in this country? That is what we are all waiting to hear, and certainly a statement that his supporters will be keen on listening in and the entire country. Again, as I mentioned, as far as social media is concerned, we have seen updates um, from court teams congratulating uh, the president-elect um, over that ruling, uh, thanking Kenyans for supporting them all the way through this process. Uh, certainly one that has had a lot of people anxious. There have been a lot of tense moments, but uh, as we do here at KTN, congratulate Kenyans for keeping the peace. So we wait to hear from the man himself, all eyes on him, the eyes of Kenya, the eyes of the world, to hear what his thoughts are on that decision by the Supreme Court that did um, basically reject all his arguments before them and uphold the presidency of one Uhuru Kenyatta. As we continue uh, with our conversation with Dr. Huntington Gaia, who is the Brand Kenya Board Chairman, even as our eyes remain there at the Prime Minister's office uh, awaiting um, his speech again, uh, just your, your thoughts on, on, on where next for Raila Odinga? I think uh, there's, a lot, of, next, uh, there's a lot of potential for the Prime Minister. He, as I said, he's a statesman, he's a very respected person. He can be our goodwill, for instance, our goodwill ambassador. He can be a presidential envoy to quite a number of uh, countries or in initiatives uh, depending on, on, on his interests. So there's a lot. He can also share his knowledge in government with a number of our universities, uh, having been even a lecturer. So there's a lot of potential. Uh, for the Prime Minister and, and his team. Would you like to see uh, the, the, the President-elect actively reach out to Raila and uh, to work with him? I would, I, would, I would like to see that and I'm very sure he will do, uh, knowing the President-elect is very magnanimous. You notice immediately he, he, he was elected, he reached out to the other candidates immediately and, and he has even had deals with some of them and they supported him uh, and his team, uh, even in the election for the Speaker of the Senate, the Speaker of the National Assembly, the Deputy Speaker, if you notice that, he mm -hmm. reached out uh, to everyone without discrimination, even to, to Dida, if you remember. Yeah. How, how, how important do you, do you feel hearing Raila Odinga say, I accept this, go ahead, 
how crucial do you think it is to just bring this thing to finality? If Israel uh, Odinga were to say, go ahead, I'll support you, that would be the start of an immense healing process for this country, a time for reconciliation, a time for, the, the, for cohesiveness in this country. It would be mm. a very, very good step for this country. Because then overnight his supporters mm. uh, will, will start healing because uh, you, you, you know most of, the, of his supporters could also be still disappointed. But if their leader, if the captain says, okay, we support the president-elect, then that would mark uh, a major step towards uh, healing this country and bringing us together. And perhaps another indicator of, you know, democracy taking root in Africa to hear um, an election loser say yes, indeed. Yeah. I, well, I may have problems with the uh, with the process. We went to the to the right legal um, uh, appeal process, and they have still overruled us. I accept this. Do you think that is a counter argument against the backdrop of violent takeovers of power that yeah. we are still witnessing across Africa in this day and age? Is Kenya really indeed setting uh, the and, example here? And that can be very good uh, mm. for us, and it can be good if it starts here, because uh, we, as, as leaders in Africa, that would be very good. I think this is one of the things we should we should uh, borrow from uh, from Israel. We should borrow from U.S. If you remember, Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. contested uh, for the Democratic ticket with Obama. Mm -hmm. She lost and Obama brought, uh, brought her in as the Secretary of State and she served Obama very loyal. Recently, uh, John Kerry was appointed Secretary of State again in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and has, has been an opponent of, of, of President Obama. This is what we should also start seeing in Africa and more so from home here. If that starts, then we are on the way again to reclaim our leadership in Africa. And uh, if we mention, like most of our institutions, starting from our judiciary, we have had uh, a lot of support from Kenyans who now have confidence in our institutions. We, we have also had uh, independent uh, electoral and bounded commission. Many Kenyans are now supporting it and quite a number of Kenyans uh, mm -hmm. are telling us that the rest of Africa are actually supporting Yeah, let me just acknowledge that these images that we are seeing on the streets, of course we, we do have security we, we earlier saw a heavy deployment of security personnel across uh, Nairobi really trying to keep the peace. I believe the images that you're seeing are from uh, the city centre um, also as we just keep our eyes at the Prime Minister's office, but there is heavy security uh, detail across the country as we wait to hear from the Prime Minister himself. We can't see his legal teams are there, Amoswako James Orengo being there. Um, jubilant scenes, I suppose those are with, uh, across uh, the screen there as we take a look at what's happening across the country, accepting um, what we've heard from the Supreme Court and now waiting to hear from the man himself um, in as far as um, his own processing of that decision by the Supreme Court. I think that's a picture of a little bit of vandalism that we may have seen um, at that store, um, but certainly nothing, nothing to indicate the kind of worrying violence I think that a lot of people had, uh, had had concerns about that this could be a situation that really degenerates into something ugly. So we really haven't seen ugly images as far as we're concerned. A bit of that disturbance there um, in the city center, but nothing major. Legal teams there, I'm sure they've had their conversation with their man, yeah. and shortly he should be addressing yeah. Kenya and the world. Yes, uh, and I think uh, and another thing that we should uh, we should maybe talk and expect in Kenya is that uh, the code uh, the code coalition can also decide to be an effective and, and active opposition in Parliament, so that uh, we have a government that is on toes, that is kept on toes, and then we can have service delivery improved for for our citizens. And you know the pictures that we're showing now adjacent to the Prime Minister's office images, uh, Kakamega. People just, you know, going, seated anxiously, waiting to hear from the Prime Minister. And really a lot of peace and calm everywhere. And, and uh, th this is something that has, has, has to be lauded. Mm, the Prime Minister has a lot of supporters countrywide. You, you should remember that he got 43% of, of the vote. Mm. And therefore he has a very big following. That's why it is important and incumbent on him to cool them off, to rally with them, and to request them now that the verdict is clear and final, with mm -hmm. the finality. We should then support the government, uh, pre the president-elect, and that the government will be all-inclusive and that all Kenyans, even the ones who did not vote for Jubilee, will actually have, uh, have, 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 have a government that will look after all Kenyans equally, without but, fear or favor. And you know, it really starts with one, and, and I'm big on the power of one person. You know, yeah. you know your friend was voting 
contrary yes. to your opinion yes. and you being that point of change yeah. and reaching out you to reach me. out and uh, as i told you 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 mm. reach out to your friend especially to the loser it is a an act of humility mm -hmm. it's also spiritual you reach, you reach out to your friends who have lost embrace them don't don't, don't be arrogant don't over celebrate and tell them okay this is a game it is politics uh, this time we, we lost next time uh, you will lose and we win this is the culture that i'm trying to say we should cultivate as a nation or people of a country and then this will be a major step towards helping us we must accept that in any political uh, election there will be losers and they'll be winners so in order to inculcate this culture in our political uh, sort of cycle we must appreciate that politics should instead of being a game for or a competition for ethnicity it should now be a game of or a competition of policies you know which about our programs and not personalities so if we accept uh, uh, the verdict and then uh, the, the, the losers form formidable position mm. and we achieve as a country socio-economic development then we will know that there's a role for winners and there's also a role for the opposition and it's not a winner take it all and i think well we are seeing um, uh, a lot of the, the the people the teams Rolo Dingas, um uh, i think closest supporters really in terms of politics standing who are standing there taking a seat and i, I think this should signal that any minute now he should be ready um to address us in the country uh the scenes in nyeri there adjacent uh, to that picture of course of the jubilation the celebration as the supreme court upheld the election of uh president elect uhuru kenyatta and let us thank also our audiences because there you can tell they were watching us on KTN and thanks to our audiences watching across this country who have kept it with us throughout uh, our groundbreaking coverage of Choice 2013. We certainly do appreciate you staying with your independent and authoritative channel. We are waiting for the Prime Minister to deliver his words and uh, obviously continue to call on Kenyans to reach out to each other. It starts yes. with you. Don't just wait to hear it um, you know, from our leaders. Be the change as yes. well that you want to see in this country. Be that mm. example. Mm. I think and the point you are making is very important. Like when we told Kenyans to be peaceful and not to allow themselves to be incited by politicians, Kenyans themselves at the individual level came mm -hmm. out in large numbers, mm -hmm. lined up peacefully, voted peacefully and actually resisted from being being incited into violence so this is the same thing that we are trying to tell them to reach to their friends and make sure we re we start reconciliation from with your neighbors and beyond all our ethnicity and we start creating that brotherhood uh, our sisterhood that is necessary for a nation that is going through a transition towards democracy it is this kind of culture and kenyans are good in this starting from our uh, arambe our motto of arambe mm -hmm. and you remember yes we can pull together and, and peace, and love and unity. yes and be there mm -hmm. for each of us either in adversity or even in the situation of, of a win and this can be a culture that we can then uh, move on and have embrace uh, henceforth and this would be a start of uh, our greatness as a people or our identity as a nation Right, absolutely, and, and, and we are a great country. And, and you're, you're right in saying that, you know, earlier you talked about congratulating ourselves when yes. we do well. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, of course, there, there's a lot of concern as to whether or not IBC did a good job, as opposed to, you know, doing, performing, yes, their, their constitutional duties, you yes. know, um, but did they do a good job? And can we mm. get a better uh, police um, body going forward? And a lot of the arguments that were in their favor said this was an 18-month-old team. Yeah who basically had to run an election in what others would have had five years six ago. ballots mark it was six ballots and ibc is new and and and, and they manage it and they did they, the new electoral yes, the point I want to get to is in the next election what do you think they can correct where can we strengthen confidence in that electoral body well, my, my point is this from where they have done and they've done very well we should first take stock and accept first they have done very well but we should also accept that whatever they did can be improved and then isolate the areas that they can do better for instance uh, uh, on the electronic voter registration they could do better on procurement so that they have got uh, good equipment that that do not fail and then practicing and rehearsing these things well in time you know they could we could have this one well on how they could help in nomination mm -hmm. right from the primary level you know the the primary elections level mm -hmm. they could handle the election right from uh, the nomination of the primary left so that we ha we build up some democracy from the primaries and then culminating in the main elections this could be done well we could also uh, we could also see whether we we need really to do six ballots at the same time or whether we could 
uh, we could I isolate this. All right. Thank you so much uh, for your views uh, uh, with us. Let's cross over to our Asha Milu, who is live at the Prime Minister's office and keeping her eyes peeled there as we wait to hear from him. Asha. This is the conference hall at the Prime Minister's office along Harambe Avenue where Raila Amolo Odinga, Cod's flag bearer and the Prime Minister of the Republic since 2008 is expected to give his official speech to the Kenyan public after the Supreme Court, the sixth judge bench, gave their ruling appointing the election of Uhuru Kenyatta as the fourth president of the Republic of Kenya. Of course, as we know, a lot of people have been waiting for that verdict, and Raila Odinga was following closely on the court proceedings from his office, second floor here at the Harambe Avenue office, and we understand that any minute now he should be making his way into this room where local journalists, international journalists, some human rights activists are waiting here, and of course, top leadership from his court coalition, both the ODM and the Wiper parties are here, awaiting the Prime Minister to come in at any moment now to give his speech. A lot of Kenyans will be waiting to hear what the Prime Minister will tell Kenyans and especially his supporters at this time. We understand that there is some anxiety and tension in some parts of the country, of course, where the Prime Minister's strongholds are, and everyone is keen on what the Prime Minister will say concerning the verdict and how he concede defeat, if you will, and how he will address the entire issue. We have been waiting here for a couple of hours, and since the Supreme Court gave its ruling, we understand the Prime Minister has been in his office with some of his leaders from the court coalition just discussing that specific verdict before coming up here to give his official speech. And even before Chief Justice William Mutunga and the other five judges of the Supreme Court gave their final ruling on, ruling on the election petition, the Prime Minister's office had already informed journalists that one hour after that, the Prime Minister would be giving his official speech on that verdict, whichever way it went. And of course, we, under, we know that the Supreme Court has upheld the election of Uhuru Kenyatta, Prime Minister Raila Odinga's biggest competitor in politics for many years now. And we should be hearing his official speech any moment now in this conference hall. We can see some of the legal counsels that represented Raila Odinga in his election petition. We have seen Amos Wako sitting there at the front row of this conference hall. We, of course, we're seeing a lot of international and local attention from this press briefing. This is a man who has put his ring into the race, the presidential race, a couple of times. This, he was hoping, would have been his opportunity to become Kenya's president. But as the court has ruled, we are looking at a one rightfully free and fair election in the March 4th general election. And now Raila Odinga is just about to address Kenyans on this matter. James Matt, of course, we're just awaiting the man, Raila Odinga. He is just coming in and you can hear clapping. So James, let's just hear to see what he will be saying. So, well, uh, I can see that uh, the house is full. Ladies and gentlemen of the, the media, good evening. It's, it's taken a little longer because uh, this was you know, a different statement. But I have a statement that um, I'm going to read on the judgment of the Supreme Court, which has just been delivered uh, some minutes ago. You will recall that on 9th of March uh, this year, I issued a statement on the conduct of the election which had just been concluded. I expressed my deep gratitude to all Kenyans who had turned out massively to exercise their democratic rights to vote and elect their leaders. I, however, express my dismay 
that contrary to the expectations of Kenyans, we witness the failure of virtually every instrument the IEBC had de de deployed to ensure free, fair, and transparent elections. <coughs> I outlined such failures with the concrete examples of the anomalies that all of us witnessed. It was clear that the constitutionally sanctioned process of electing new leaders had been thwarted again by another tainted election. Democracy was on trial in Kenya. But that has not dented my commitment to constitutionalism and the rule of law. Enforcing the spirit and letter of the Constitution remains the only sure way to peace and prosperity for our young democracy. My decision to file a petition in the Supreme Court to challenge the validity of the election was a testament of my faith in the independence of our judiciary. We did so for the sake of our democracy and for the sake of all Kenyans who wanted to exercise their constitutional right to elect their leaders through free and fair elections. We were joined in this endeavor by AFRICOG, which separately filed a petition seeking to nullify the 4th of March presidential election. This proves that our petition had nothing to do with personal grudge as contended by the IEBC, the Honorable Huru Kenyatta, and Honorable William Ruto. In the petition, I express our belief that the court would uphold the letter and spirit of our constitution. I pledge to abide by the court decision. We prosecuted the case to the best of our ability. Our legal team, led by Senior Counsel George Oraro, compiled a formidable and logical evidence showing that massive malpractices occurred during the election. We unearthed evidence of technology failure that required a full audit, inappropriate conduct on the part of IBC staff, irregular and unethical arrangements such as the sharing of servers by IBC with a competitor and unmarked registers. We regret that the court disallowed evidence on the grounds that it was either filed late or the court did not have time to inquire into these discrepancies. In the end, Kenyans lost their right to know what indeed happened. Ladies and gentlemen, the court has now spoken. Article 140 of our Constitution states that the Supreme Court shall hear and determine the petition and its decision is final. Although we may not agree with some of its findings, and despite all the anomalies we have pointed out, our belief in constitutionalism remains supreme. Casting doubt on the judgment of the court could lead to higher political and economic uncertainty and make it more difficult for our country to move forward. We must soldier on in our resolve to reform our politics and institutions. Respect for the supremacy of the Constitution in resolving disputes between fellow citizens is the surest foundation of our democratic society. And the courts should always act within the evolving constitutional culture. I and my brother and running mate, Honorable Stephen Kalonzo Musioka, have no regrets for taking our case to court. Indeed, it is our view that this court, this court process is yet another milestone in our long road towards democracy for which we have fought for so long. Truth, justice, and the faithful implementation of the Constitution is our best guarantee 
to peace and security. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is my hope that the incoming government will have fidelity to our constitution and implement it to the letter for the betterment of our people. And in this regard, I wish the President-elect, Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta, and his team well. I also wish all the senators, members of parliament, women representatives, governors, and others who were elected in the last uh, elections success in discharging the expect expectations of our people. I want to thank uh, Senior Counsel George Oraro and the members of his legal team for their hard work, <laughs> for their hard work and devotion in the quest for justice. I would also like to pay special tribute to the Africa legal team led heavily by Kathy Kilonzo for their immense contribution <laughs> for their immense contribution to the rule of law and democracy. To the Kenyans who supported us uh, to the Kenyans who supported us in our petition, I want to assure you that I will continue to work for you and with you to build our country, Kenya, and to help you achieve your dreams. Our actions have always been guided by our desire to bring about a better life for all Kenyans, particularly those who are less privileged. The future of Kenya is bright. Let us not allow the elections to divide us. Let us reunite as a nation. Finally, I call on all Kenyans, our supporters and opponents alike, to remember the sacred words of our national anthem, justice be our shield and defender. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless Kenya.